Welcome to Oceanic Oracle. My name is Ari and today I have something really exciting. It is the first day of my like countdown to Christmas. Uh, I'm going to be uploading every other day in December because Christmas is my absolute favourite time of the year. I mean, I am very partial to spring, being a spring baby and all, but like Christmas is one of my favourite times of the year. So I thought I'd share some of my holiday joy with all of you because it's it's just this time of year, it's the time for giving. I feel like I want to give back to all of you. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But this video is going to be holiday releases that I'm looking forward to reading. I have a list on Goodreads, so I have my laptop down here with the synopsises so I don't, um, so I know what I'm talking about. But I also, I also have my handy dandy book here that I'm going to be referencing as well, mainly for titles and authors. Before I start, this list is in no particular order. This list is just when I discovered the books because I'm just going down in chronological order in my, on my Goodreads list. So it's just when I discovered them and added them to the releases I want to read. I have a variety of them. Some of them are like just wintry Christmassy things, so holiday. Um, I think other there are some other holidays in here as well. I believe there's a book that surrounds Hanukkah as well as a book about Diwali or the Festival of Lights um, which takes place at this time of the year. But yeah, I just have a list of them and I thought I would share them and tell you what I'm really excited to read. I should preface as well, I do have a mixture of new adult, adult and YA books. I tend to lean towards the new adult and YA books because that's just what I prefer reading. So the first one that's on the list chronologically is Window Shopping and this is by Tessa Bailey. I heard about this because I have read a book by Tessa Bailey earlier this year. Was it Fix Her Up? I think that's what it's called. This book takes place two weeks before Christmas and it takes place in Manhattan and all the shop windows are decked out ready for Christmas in red and green tinsel. <laughs> Our main character stands outside a really famous shop, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Vivant? Vivant? Standing out of that shop, a man asks her about her opinion on the window display and our main character <laughs> tells him the truth, she doesn't like him. Uh, she says that she doesn't like it and he asks, well, what do you think would make it better? She doesn't know that he actually owns the place so when he asks her to help, uh, she doesn't say no. And she puts her all of her energy into these making these displays like beautiful. Obviously there's a romance in there as well, I mean, I, Tessa Bailey's books tend to be more new adult in their like uh, smut content, so be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like a fun book and I think I'm gonna like it. I'm excited to read Window Shopping. I liked Tessa Bailey's writing when I read her book earlier this year, so I think I'm gonna like this one. So this next book is a YA book and it's called The Holiday Switch by Tiff Marcello. This is a YA book, so it's about two, uh, yeah, it's about two students. So this takes place in like the last year of high school, so you know, like the last year of secondary school, so right before going off to college. It's about two like work rivals who have to like work together. This book follows a Filipino American girl and she bumps into this innkeeper's nephew. They accidentally swap phones one afternoon and they realise they've both been hiding things from each other and they discover more about more about themselves and each other. Um, and the question is, will this bring them closer to love? Who knows? It just sounds like a fun book and I'm looking forward to picking it up. I'm, I have high hopes for it. I, I'm so excited. I think like this just like this just sounds so like it's it's just right up my alley and it sounds like a wholesome, I guess wholesome, uh, book and yeah I'm looking forward to picking it up. This next one is so exciting because I don't know if you use Goodreads but I use Goodreads a lot. I get emails based on the genres that I like and that I have been reading and this year I have been reading a lot more adult romance so when this was in my inbox with the like holiday romances that yeah, you should pick up. I saw this and I got really excited. This book is called Holly Jolly Diwali 
Uh, this is by Sonia Lally. I think I'm saying that correctly. If I'm not, please correct me in the comments. This book is about a type A data analyst who discovers her free spirited side and she goes off on holiday. She goes to the bustling city of Mumbai. She goes to the beaches of Goa uh, and she finds her love on a Christmas morning. Um, so this is about Ricky Rathwana. She's always made practical decisions uh, and even though she loves music and art, she's become an analyst for stability. Uh, I, I understand that. <laughs> she's always stayed close to home in case her family needs her. Uh, and she's always dated guys that seem like good on paper, but aren't very good in real life. Uh, I'm sure lots of people know that feeling. After she's been laid off, she decides to just go on a trip. She goes to India and she goes for her friend Thea's wedding. And when she arrives, it's, it's the time of year to celebrate Diwali. When our protagonist makes her way to India, she meets London-based musician Samir Rukhaji. Maybe it's just the feeling of Mumbai or the magic of the holiday, but Nikki is immediately drawn to him. And at the wedding, when the champagne's flowing, uh, they take their flirtatious banter and make it clear that the attraction is mutual, which is nice. Uh, so when Nikki and Sam join Daya, her husband and their friends, on a group honeymoon trip, their connection just continues to grow and grow and grow. Free-spirited Sam helps Nikki discover like, and get in touch with her like creative side and he makes her feel more in touch with her Indian roots. When she gets a new job offer at home she has to make a decision. She has to decide how she wants to uh, go in the next chapter of her life. Does she want to stick to the straight and narrow or does she want to be free-spirited and uh, do things that she didn't think she was going to? This book just sounds so nice like I I am really looking forward to reading it because I really enjoy this sort of stuff where it's like you have someone who is I guess type A. I really don't like the generalization that people are like type A or type B because myself, like me, I'm very much in the middle. <laughs> you definitely have people who fit into one or the other but not everyone is like that and I think that's an important thing and that's one of the things that drew my eye with this book. I'm just really looking forward to it. I haven't read many um, romances set in India and I'm looking forward to reading more about Diwali and it, it just seems like a good book and good for this time of year. So that's one of the things I want to re read this season. So the next book that I have on my list is So This Is Christmas. So This Is Christmas is a YA book and this is about a girl called Finley and she has just come back from her year, more well, from her stay at boarding school. So she's come back home for the holidays. Uh, she expects to find the town exactly how she left it, but her best friend is now dating her ex-boyfriend, her parents have separated, and her arch nemesis is now working at her grandmother's inn. So in short, in like in a 16 year old's mind, the world has been turned upside down. Which, I mean, fair enough, it kind of has, particularly with the parents separating. She also doesn't expect that uh, the guy that she tricked into thinking that this was an idyllic Christmas destination uh, to turn up on her doorstep. So she really doesn't expect that. Finley takes it upon herself to turn this Christmas into her Christmas, to make it the perfect Christmas. But things don't always turn out the way you expect them to, do they? And I think that's what this sort of story is about. This seems interesting and this just sounds like a, uh, a YA romance with like a twist and I guess that's sort of what I, what I want. That's one that's interesting. I guess we should move on. The next book on this list that I want to read, I guess, is The Holiday Swap. Sort of like The Holiday Switch, but sort of not. The, in this one, I guess if you've seen The Princess Switch, so it's sort of similar to that. In this book you have, so you have identical twins, Charlie and Cass, and uh, Charlie is a chef. So Charlie gets hit on the head when she's on the way to her LA set for her own reality baking show and she loses consciousness. Not only does she lose consciousness but she also, that hit on the head also makes her lose her sense of smell and her sense of taste. 
not great if you're on a reality baking show when you're supposed to taste things as a judge. On the other side of things, Cass is frantically trying to hold her life together um, in this quaint mountain town while running the family's bustling bakery and dealing with her ex who won't get the memo that they're done. So when they're only a few days till Christmas, Charlie desperately calls Cass and says, can they can they do something that they haven't done since they were little children well since they were children and swap places so charlie takes over cass's life and cass takes over charlie's life cass agrees to it because she's also looking for, to escape her own reality for a second trading places temporarily uh it causes more complications than they expected especially when like two of their love interests one of them is a rugged firefighter named jake greenman and the other being a the other being a gorgeous physician's assistant michael rodriguez will the twins swap be a recipe for disaster or does it have all the right ingredients for for them to get their lives on track that is the question this just sounds so fun. I'm always in the mood for a good swap stories. I guess it's sort of like the Princess and the Pauper movie, like the Barbie movie. But I just, I've always loved the sort of like swap places. And yeah, that's just like, this just sounds like such a fun book. And I think if you're in the mood for sort of like swapping places shenanigans, I think this would just be a fun book and definitely on my want to read list. We'll see if I get around to it, we'll see. The next book that I have on this list is The Mistletoe Pact. So The Mistletoe Pact is one of those typical like, oh, we made a pact when we were younger. Are we going to act on it? Uh, so the, in this case, um, on Christmas Eve, eight years ago in the story, our two main characters, Evie and Dan, make a pact that if they're not married by the age of 30, they'd get married to each other. Um, they didn't take it seriously, even though Dan was always mesmerised by Evie's beautiful smile and Evie always fancied Dan, her best friend's brother. You know, the classic mutual pining trope, which I find like this, it's just fun. Not fun for the characters, can be a bit annoying as a reader, but definitely like one of the things I like about like romance books is the mutual pining stage. But then it happens. They get married in Vegas. They wake up on Christmas Eve, the night before Evie's 30th birthday in Vegas, and they're married. <laughs> the honeymoon suite is filled with like hundreds of love heart shaped pillows. And they realise too late what they've actually done. Surely if they file for a quick divorce, they can get back to how things were. If it wasn't for the alcohol and Susan with the huge beehive hairdo, uh, who wouldn't take no for an answer, none of this would have happened. Uh, then they could just go back to being friends. Except moving on is easier said than done. I mean, they've both secretly been in love with each other for years. If they don't get it together in time, what happens to the pact? And are they really ready to let go? Sounds like a fun Christmassy book to read. Uh, again, not 100% solely based on Christmas, although things happen on Christmas Eve, but just seems fun. Well, if I'm in the mood for like a mutual pining marriage uh, romance book, I'll definitely pick it up. The next book on my list is one that I'm really excited for. This book isn't about Christmas, it's about Hanukkah. It's called The Matzo Ball. And it follows Rachel Rubenstein Golbat, um, who is a nice Jewish girl with a shameful secret, she loves Christmas. And for a decade, she's hidden from her family the fact that she is a, like, she is a Christmas romance writer. Her talent has made her a best-selling author, even though her chronic illness has stopped her from achieving or reaching the love that she writes about, which shouldn't be that, that way. But one day, her diversity conscious publisher asked her to write about to write a Hanukkah romance instead of the usual Christmas romance uh she finds her inspiration running dry Hanukkah is not magical uh in her eyes it's not merry it's not Christmas desperate not to lose her contract Rachel is determined to find her muse at the matzo ball a Jewish music celebration on the on the last night of Hanukkah even if it means working with her arch enemy from summer camp, Jacob Greenberg. 
Though Rachel and Jacob haven't seen each other since they were kids, their grudge still glows brighter than a menorah. But as they spend more time together, Rachel finds herself drawn to Hanukkah and to Jacob uh, in a way she never expected. Uh, maybe this holiday of lights will be the spark she needs to set her heart ablaze. And this just sounds fun. I'm looking forward to this one. I am interested to read a story about Hanukkah. I I'm interested in reading this. I am looking forward to reading about other people's holidays and other people's celebrations because December is a very, like, it's a very festive month, not just for Christmas, but for other things. And I think that those things need to be highlighted as well. So I'm looking forward to picking this up. I cannot wait. It sounds so much fun. I love that it's hate to love. If you, like, obviously you've seen my channel, I am definitely more of a like hate to love, like friendship to love sort of person. That's like, those are the tropes that I really enjoy. And I'm just like, I'm just looking forward to this. This just sounds like it's something right up my alley. I can't wait. I am looking forward to picking it up. The next book that I have on here is Nick and Noel's Christmas Playlist. So this is a romance about well this is a second time romance and it's a friends to lovers romance which nick winter has just got out of the military his christmas homecoming isn't going as planned um he was supposed to have a memorable holiday with his long time long distance girlfriend but turns out she's cheated on him so after hearing that bad news um at least nick can rely on his usual shift at his family's christmas tree farm with his best friend noelle carter and her endless supply of christmas tunes to lift his spirits a fun night with her is just what he needs to forget about his ex but then they kiss and it feels so right this is the kind of thing i love about friends to lovers like i i just love friends to lovers if Noel can turn Nick's blue Christmas merry and bright, this might be the last Christmas Nick spends with a broken heart. This year, they'll be rocking around the Christmas tree as a couple, as long as Nick's ex doesn't go standing under any mistletoe. It just sounds fun. As I've already said, I'm a big fan of Friends to Lovers and I'm a big fan of the like, oh, one kiss just feels so right. I, I love that trope. But anyway, like this just sounds great for when you're like looking to get cozy you got a big blanket on you got your christmas jumper on uh, or or whatever jumper that you're wearing it doesn't have to be christmas based and you're just you've got a you've got a cup of hot cocoa or whatever your preferred hot drink could be mulled wine could be a hot toddy could be anything and you're just you're there and you're reading with christmas lights this just sounds really like really enjoyable the next book I have on here is Blame It on the Mistletoe, which is another YA Christmas book. Uh, this is about a social media star, Elle, who lives the hashtag dream life, uh, or so it seems. But she's determined to shake up her content and gain new followers. So she's on a mission. Can she find a British fan to swap with for Christmas? Holly loves everything about Christmas, but after a mortifying mistletoe disaster with her ex, her perfect plans uh, unravel into a bad Christmas. Can Holly save the holidays when she swaps places with her favourite social media influencer? Elle gets more than she's bargained for when she meets the cute boy from across the street. And Holly isn't expecting Elle to have a handsome twin brother. Um, this holiday is full of surprises. Just seems fun. It's a YA Christmas romance. You can't get mad at a YA Christmas romance, I think. Honestly, it's just now on to the last book that I have on my list. This book is called Duke actually and I think this is actually the second book in a series. This follows uh, Maximilian von Hansburg, a baron and heir to a dukedom or the Duke of Aquila um, and he is trapped. He is under pressure from his father to find a suitable bride. He must find a suitable bride in order to inherit his inheritance but he feels like it's a prison sentence so when he's in new york to meet a prospective wife he ditches it all and appears on danny martinez's doorstep he's been intrigued by her no-nonsense attitude since he met her at an eldovian at the eldovian royal reading and he is determined to befriend befriend her 
Danny is newly single and is done with love. She has a list entitled Things I Will Never Do Again For A Man, which is why she hits it off with a notorious rake max. Again, the term rake pops up. He's trying to escape relationships and she's resolved to avoid them at all costs. All they want from each other is friendship and a distraction from their messy lives. Uh, their bond begins to deepen and so does their attraction until they end up in bed together. Who would have thought? Uh, falling in love was never part of the plan. Max's family doesn't see Danny as a perfect match, um, even as his heart tells him she's the one. And Danny isn't sure she can make it in Max's world. Can they find the courage to live life they desire, even if it is risking everything? Hopefully I'll be able to pick it up soon. That's the end of my list. Uh, it's a long one, uh, but I thought it would be good to share some releases. Maybe you're interested in reading, reading some new things. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you want more bookish content. I will be uploading every other day in December, so I, I think I'm releasing this on the 2nd. So my next video will be out on the 4th, so look forward to that. My social media links are also in the description, so feel free to check them out if you want. I have my Goodreads down there as well, so if you're interested in following what I'm reading and seeing my updates and things, please, please follow me on there. Um, I think it's a good place to share what I'm actually reading this month. I think it's a good place to see what I'm actually doing. And yeah, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day or night, depending on when you're watching this. And I'll see you two days from now. <laughs> Bye.